28 hours on the world's most luxurious train. I'm taking the world's most luxurious sleeper train, the Venice Simplon Orient Express, all the way across Europe to Venice. I'll be staying in the best room on board. And yes, of course, this includes free flowing champagne, my own dining and living space, and the cherry on top. Of course, an Italian marble ensuite bathroom. Oh, bro, what a slut this guy is. I mean, I'm here for it. I'm already horned up because I saw a train. But then on top of that, he's just like, this guy is a dweeb, but his girlfriend, Millie, is a dreamboat, lol. Okay, first of all, he cannot be a dweeb. He is a, is a train enjoyer. Okay, so chill out with that. Back in time with me on this iconic 28-hour journey with dinner in Paris, waking up in the Swiss Alps and writing postcards whilst gliding through the Italian lakes. I'll give you a never-before-seen insight into exactly what it's like from the variety of bedrooms available, the stunning restaurants, and when night falls, we'll enjoy cocktails in the lounge car to the sound of the He's baby... He's a Tory, though? Wait, really? Dude, how can you be a train enjoyer and a Tory at the same time? Like, they have eviscerated public transit. That's so fucked up. And piano. Our luxury train leaves from Calais at 4.30, so in order to catch this, I'll hop on the Eurostar in London, and after a short ride under the English Channel, I'm met by the Belmont team in Lille, and transferred by road over to today's iconic train. Hello there, and welcome back to the channel, and to a very special event today, where we're gonna be riding on the Orient Express. This is something no, I've dreamt not. about just making shit up. years, oh. and it's- Dude, why are there so many- there, there is a lot of people who are disparaging the good name of a train enjoyer, and I don't know why. It'd be your own ones, I think. Like, this is a community full of train enjoyers, and here you are shitting on a fellow train enjoyer. What the fuck is this? Probably why are you spreading lies? Luxurious travel. So without any more to say, let's get straight on board. I also have a very special surprise in store for you. Can we just talk about how crazy this is? This train is... What? In what world is this shit public transport? It costs 10K or more? Brother, we like trains of all shapes and sizes. I'm not saying this is public transit. I'm saying that trains, the overwhelming majority of trains are public transit. The fuck do you mean? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> how is this a train? <laughs> struggling to process this. Bear in mind, a lot of my experiences so far have involved the likes of Amtrak. This is in a very different league. <sighs> right, okay, I need to compose myself. There is a rational reason for my unrestrained excitement here. I booked and paid handsomely for the twin cabin. Not in my wildest dreams did I anticipate an upgrade of this magnitude. Bear in mind, the Grand Suites retail north of $20,000. So something I'm not used to at all is that my bags were totally taken care of and they're currently up here waiting for me to unpack. So of course I'm not traveling as light as I usually would because I have another companion coming along, my lovely girlfriend Millie. Say hello Millie. <laughs> Oh, right, I get well, first it. Of all, we have a you guys hate him because he's a train enjoyer and he has a sexy girlfriend. It's like it's like jealousy. That's what it is. I get it. You're like, why can't he live my life? Why can't I live his life? Is what you're saying. You're looking at him and you're seeing him live his best fucking life. A pre-departure drink. Uh, the Clico just here. Well, as in there, we also have some caviar. So, Millie, what's your uh, thoughts on trying caviar? in a suite now, this is the first of many champagne bottles we're able to consume. In fact, it's bottomless throughout the journey. This is complemented with fresh fruits and perhaps the best caviar I've ever had the pleasure of trying. So it's caviar time. Um, this is the first on a train and in fact, I think it's the very first time that I've had caviar on the ground. Well, I can confirm I love it just as much on a train as I do on a plane. So back to our journey, the first segment will take us some 200 miles south to Paris, where we'll pick up the rest of the passengers. Currently there are only 11 on board this huge train, where the staff definitely outnumber the guests. I feel like it's that- What the fuck? Wait, what? Bro, what a waste, dude. Holy shit, that's insane. Please tell me they're gonna take more than like- Time of the video where we need to have a look around. 
the suite because you've seen it in the background but let's have a proper look around all the features because it is utterly mind-blowing and I've just been informed of some of the costs of some of the things I mean even the mirror that I'm resting my hand on just here apparently that costs 27,000 euros um, so I better not break it I'm in the Istanbul Grand Suite, designed and built by the finest artisanal craftsmen in Europe. The double bed of course being the main attraction on a sleeper train, but this wouldn't be out of place in a 5 star hotel. Aside from the light controls, the blue buttons dotted around the cabin are for your butler who is on call 24-7. And as for the handcrafted wooden headboard, I can't begin to imagine the amount of hours that this took to complete. While your room is fully air conditioned with controls by the suite entrance, you can open the window for additional ventilation. This also provides an excellent vantage point for some of the more scenic parts of the journey. There's great storage too, with two wardrobes to hang your jackets, dresses and shirts. Naturally, as the rest of the suite, it's adorned in beautiful highly polished wood. You also have a sofa, which I'm told will convert to an additional bed should you be traveling with a very lucky child, though this rarely happens. I'm actually taking a quick glance at the breakfast menu now. This is very punchy. Caviar, lobster and truffle, to name a few. Oh fuck. The non-sweet bathroom, because, you know, it's the Orient Express. Basically, it is dinner time in 15 minutes. So, I need to change. On the Orient Express, of course, as you've noticed already, I need to be relatively formally dressed. At dinner, you need to be even more so, of course. So um, this isn't gonna quite cut it. Wait, why? Well, there we go. Um, I have to say this is the most formal I've ever been on the channel. So uh, do bear with me, but there is the request that you have to dress formally or else you have to eat your dinner in your room. And whilst I do like my nasty- What? Bro, imagine, imagine paying fucking 28 grand. Imagine paying $28,000 to be on that fucking thing. And then they're like, uh, sorry, sir. I apologize, but uh, you're not allowed to dine with the rest of the passengers uh, because you simply do not have a suit. This is not suitable. Go to your room like a fucking kid. It's because people who pay 28 grand don't want to see other people in t-shirts or whatever. That's the same as a Queen Mary cruise ship. You have to dress formally in the dining room. See, that's a great comparison <clears throat> because this is infinitely better than a fucking cruise ship. Um, I leave Tuesday to travel around Europe for a month. Would you recommend Eurorail? If so, should I do first class over second? Only an extra hundred dollars. It's always better. If you have the money, yes, always upgrade, dude. What are you, crazy? Yeah. To, to be fair, um, the uh, if I remember correctly on the trains that I've been on, um, I did take a train from London to uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we took first class, but I, I think the upgrades on a train are, the upgrades on a train like that are not, all that significant like you you'll it's pretty much the same it's just like a little bit it's like a little bit more space i think so just understand that you're not getting like this experience if you think that you're gonna get this like luxury experience like it's not gonna happen uh it's just more empty and um usually you'll just get like uh, a, a little bit more room first class on you trains a scam i mean not it doesn't matter hoodie we'll make do with an asset badge and now for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is my number one language app. It uses I and receives 65% off your subscription. Use my link down below to take you right to that discount. Thanks again, Babbel, for sponsoring today's video. Well, this is the event, isn't it? Walking all the way through the train. Thank you. I'm going on a proper adventure, Millie. It certainly beats walking to dinner on Amtrak, eh? I can't say Amtrak on here. There are actually three restaurants on the train, though as only 11 passengers are currently on- <laughs> I was about to say, what the fuck? Three restaurants for 11 passengers? What the hell is this? They had they don't even have four passengers per restaurant, dude. Bored, they've opened just one this evening. The beautiful and elegantly designed Coke du jour. <laughs> Someone's getting poisoned, yeah. The environment is set perfectly for a, a little bit of poisoning. Launched for the 2022 season, we're among the first to try Chef Jean and Burr's culinary experience. Your dinner is included, though the option to splurge for caviar is there if you wish. As we're in a suite, I'll continue my obligatory bottomless champagne drinking. We're offered fresh Parisian bread, complemented by a Ooh. saffron and orange butter. To quote Millie, this is the best bread I've ever had. 
Oif. As we wait for our food, we continue our slow trundle into Paris. To start, I have the lobster salad with avocado and burrata. Aside from being elegantly presented, it was absolutely divine. A delicate fusion of flavours, leaving me wanting more. But worry not, we're just getting started. Next up is the beef wellington, or arguably oh! a more deconstructed version, with buttery Fucking flaky beef pastry, with itself tender and succulent, resting on a bed of mushroom. It's not a beef it wellington if it's deconstructed, mate! What you fucking mean? Phenomenal, comfortably surpassing any dish I've ever had on a first class flight. I actually feel that's quite insulting to even suggest that. Next up, there's a choice of a cheese board or sorbet. I opt for the latter, feeling pretty full already and knowing dessert. You chose a sorbet over the cheese board? Pathetic. That is just around the corner. It's fresh and importantly light, leaving me with a small amount of room for the finale. And just like that, we arrive into Paris Gare de l'Est. This is where the remaining passengers will board, taking guest numbers to around 30 in total. And as if by cue, our dessert is here. The tiramisu souffle coupled with a mascarpone ice cream. The souffle tiramisu is light, souffle? fluffy, but to me didn't have a huge level of flavour. Now it's time for the bill, but as we're a sweet guest, the additional drinks we enjoyed are taken care of. Right, so dinner out of the way. We're actually, we've arrived in Paris. So we're here for 40 minutes. It's nice to get off the train and get a bit of fresh air, but just getting used to seeing this train parked up against all of the sort of very modern trains, it's it's like something out of a movie. I mean, realistically, Millie and I were just saying that we watched Murder on the Orient Express recently, which um, I mean, I hope doesn't happen. The point is, is just seeing how beautiful the train was in that movie and seeing it in the flesh here is just, well, just so surreal. Yeah, we got a little bit confused there. We've just got back on. Now we're gonna to head to the bar, but for some reason we walked the opposite direction. So uh, yeah, time to go over to uh, get a drink and make sure Millie doesn't get distracted by the, uh, the boutique just here. In Paris, I saw a dead guy at the train station, so I guess price does change even the station quality. What the fuck? Yes. There we go. Oh, would you look at this? Istanbul mentioned. It's all been turned down for bed. So I've noticed one thing, this gift. Now I assumed it would be chocolates. However, look what it is. It's a pen. Now, I love it, it's a great thing, but I can't eat it before bed, can I? Now it is finally time. Bro, you've eaten the entire train, homie. Like, no disrespect, but goddamn, you know what I mean? Like, they, what? <laughs> like. Time to get out of this formal wear. And uh, well, let's be honest. Got a dressing gown to change into. So the other thing that's pretty incredible, and I guess makes sense given how much these sweets are, is this dressing gown, which is designed by Dolce & Gabbana. I can actually what the take fuck? me home. I mean, that's a gift to remember, isn't it? I'm hey, like, um, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Steal the Dolce, baby. He knows what anyway, he's doing. That's it. Now this is much more like it. We'll have a proper full look around this bathroom in the morning. Of course in the morning I've also got to have a shower. And you know how hilarious that usually is. Also, just a side note, a massive thanks to Millie who's put up with all the filming today. Oh man, poor Millie. Her life is so difficult on this $28,000 caboose, okay? They're on a goddamn train and this is not even a train. This is like a this is like a land cruise ship, okay? Come on now. How's it been coming along on one of these trips? Amazing. I mean, it's been good. Apart from having to be, well, my camera girl. <laughs> anyway, with that, I'll catch you all in the morning. You think they 
fucked on that is such a weird like they probably did but what's it to you man they deaf fucking yeah they're they're in a relationship and they're on a train together why do you y'all are being weird as fuck dude the next day someone said the the mile length club earlier Good morning. i gotta say sleeping on the orange express certainly among the more comfy way to travel by rail the beauties unimaginable it's time for breakfast and this is no ordinary affair eat whenever you want from frankly a huge selection of options. I chose to take breakfast at 8.30 as this is when we start to head into the Swiss Alps. I start with oh. pasta and avocado on toast, which aside from being the most beautiful breakfast I've ever ordered, tasted incredible. To complement this, I went with a fresh cappuccino as I move on to the next course. Naturally, you guessed it, poached eggs and caviar. This really is the breakfast of champions complementing the outstanding alpine views playing out before our very eyes. Oh my god. We're about to head up into the Alps, which I'm so excited about. The views already have been un unbelievable. Um, I think they're about to get a whole lot better. Please look up the Shikishima train. Is that the Japanese luxury train? The five star one, I think, or seven star trains is what they call them, right? If that's what you're talking about, I have seen it. We've watched it before. It's so to sick. Off with another coffee. They've made me a beautiful cappuccino. So now I think it's time to go and drink coffee in bed whilst we. You're the one rich guy who isn't allowed to do rich people stuff, lol. Yeah, I know. I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I, I already do. Here's the thing I do wherever the fuck I want, okay? I don't give a shit. People can yell at me all day, every day. I don't give a fuck. If there's something I want to purchase, no matter how expensive it is or how stupid it is, I still do it. Like, not like I fucking, I, I still went and bought a Porsche. You know what I mean? Like, Homelander moment. I mean, think about it. Homelander murders people with his laser eyes. I'm talking about a fucking commodity consumption choice that like every human being with the capacity to do so has had without any, an ounce of fucking scrutiny. My point is that I don't give a fuck how much people chirp. Something like this, I, I would absolutely fucking do for content, no matter how much people yell at me, because uh, it's sick. Are you ever going to pronounce Porsche correctly? No, I don't care. Yes, you buying a Porsche was the same as executing innocent civilians with my laser eyes. Yes. Um, people can people can chirp. When I said I don't give a fuck, I just meant like, you know, people are never going to stop screaming about dumb shit but uh it doesn't it doesn't change anything go through the reason why i don't the reason why i don't make like a lot of uh expensive big ticket item purchases is because i have no use for it not because i'm like scared that people are going to yell at me i just make that i want to make that clear for you i i don't do these because i don't do these kinds of things because i just don't have time i like doing what i'm doing which is streaming the swiss out best bits of advice I can give if you ever take this trip is to get up at a reasonable time. Besides paying an awful lot of money to be on this train, you don't want to miss the scenery in the morning, and like us, you can just have a coffee in bed, watching the world go by. Now it is time to have a shower. Now this is quite unique because most of the compartments on the train- It's pretty wild that he just filmed himself doing this. To one. Of course this actually does because it's the newer suites. Let's see what it's like. The Grand Suite bathroom is unlike any on board a train. In fact, this makes my bathroom at home look pedestrian. Note the subtle Turkish influences and a nod to the suite's name, Istanbul. I just love the attention to detail yeah, everywhere so you look. Even the mosaics on the floor, which by the way is <laughs> heated, are absolutely stunning. Aside heated? from the gradual rock of the train, you could easily forget you're on one. Right. Bitch, there is nothing Turkish about any of this. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? What is the Turkish influence that's subtle there? Heated floors? That's The crazy. main event, the shower. With both golden rainfall and shower head attachments, it's a special place to be. Unlike the Caledonian Express, the shower provides a constant warm cleansing experience with great water pressure, much like back at home. Bro, he did not just fucking... That angle is insane. Wait, that peaked, by the way. 
They fucking peaked right there. They were trying Shower to get a glimpse of that cock. Shower done, bucks. Let's get changed into my smart casual attire. Smart casual attire. Hmm, yes, At this very point, nice. I'm reminded, my Tims are far back home in England. They'll be back next week, everyone. Don't worry. Instead of the amenity kit you get in the twin compartment, you get an entire drawer in the suites, complete with my favourite Marvis toothpaste. After another hour or so winding through the Swiss countryside, we're almost at the Swiss-Italian border, Chiasso. Chiasso. Andiamo. I'm sure it will come at no surprise to you, but it's yet again food time. I'm helped down by our lovely cabin attendant, Antoinette. Hey. Chiasso. Yeah, so we have decided to take the scenic route to lunch. Um, of course, we'd usually walk through the train. Let's walk outside. Now we're currently on the Italian Swiss border. I think we're here for about 15 more minutes. So it's a chance to stretch the legs. Uh, some passengers have taken this as the chance for a smoke break because you can't smoke on the train. Neither of us do, so we don't need to worry about that. Anyway, we're all gonna walk over and get some food. You hungry? Very hungry. <laughs> I feel like all we're doing this trip though is eat. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's head straight to Etoile du Nord. I'm sure that's horribly pronounced, so sorry. Another one of the three restaurants on board the train. And given how busy it is, this is what it looks like when it's empty. Right, food time. Another solid menu today. And no, I'm not tempted. The average is just like 68 in there. With more caviar. I think I've had my fill until next week. There's more of the phenomenal Parisian oh! bread and saffron infused butter, which go down a treat with both Millie and I, whilst we wait for our appetizers. Wait, does it say 640 euro? 640 euros for caviar? What the fuck? Bro, 640 euros? I'm, I'm misunderstanding, right? They mean like 50 grams of it? Okay. I mean, I don't know how many grams you have normally. What would you, you get a whole can, dude? Brother, it's caviar. What are you going to do with a whole can? Shove it in your ass? It has literally no... It's nothing. It's just like rich people salt. What the fuck do you mean? For 640 euros, you get a fucking tin can of caviar? And literally, it doesn't even fill you up. Caviar Beluga Czar Imperial Petrosian. Beluga caviar is the most expensive caviar in the world. Broke-ass behavior, not going to lie. Bro, It there is no... That's not worth, man. That's just not... I've eaten some of the best, high quality, most decadent meats on the planet, okay? Literally. Like, I, I had Kobe beef in Kobe, okay? And even that entire meal that I, we had, me and Connor, who Connor paid for, well, technically the Kobe government paid for, that was like, I think that was like $400 or $500, and that was like the most expensive meal I've ever had in Japan by a very, uh, a, a, a very wide margin. The idea that like, 640 euros for an entire fucking tin can is such a scam dude in kobe did the did they call kobe beef just beef yes they called it just beef why do rich people get shit for free this is so fucking rigged first of all yes it of course, it absolutely is it's infinitely cheaper to be rich than it is to be fucking broke it is very expensive to be poor something i talk about all the time but the reason why we got all that food and all the other shit for free is because we were filming content. I'm seeing caviar from $9,000 and lower. What the fuck? Dude, what kind of asshole does this fish have for it to be pooping out $9,000 caviar? I do not understand it. Like, you're throwing up huhs, but that's it. Like, you know what caviar is, right? Chat, you know what this is, right? It's, it's fish eggs. It's just like fish pooping it out. They're just, they're, they're getting it out of the beluga bussy. It doesn't come from the butt. It comes from the fish gina. Man, I don't fucking know. Y'all are fish murderers. Yeah, it's... Let's keep going. There's more of the phenomenal Parisian bread and that saffron bread is fire. butter, which go down a treat with both Millie and I, whilst we wait for our appetizers. I've gone for the green asparagus. It looks, as all the other dishes do, Ew. stunning. I no, that looks like shit. You're just British, my man. Sorry. This is the first time I'm going to disrespect the homie here, because, like... That does not look good at all. Those asparagus are like way too fat and it's like boiled. It looked awful. I really enjoyed it, although I could only eat about half. Now, I love asparagus, but I felt there's a little too much of a good thing. Plus, the blood orange was overpowering, in my opinion. 
as we depart Chiasso, we officially enter Italy, third and final country of this Come adventure. On. Now for my favourite dish of the trip, the supreme poultry, or well, chicken, with an albufera sauce infused with a 100 year old oh. Armagnac. This dish alone oh. has ruined chicken for me. Unbelievable. Oh, sick. that is so good. Oh my God. Remember what I said about chicken dishes in fancy restaurants? I take it back. This is, that's valid, dude. That looks valid. Oh, that was, that looks fire, dude. Holy Seems. shit. As we trundle ever further into Italy, it's not long before dessert arrives. Strawberries and vanilla vacherin. I'm so Ooh. pleased this was on the menu. It's not something I'd ordinarily order, and I'd certainly jump at having this option again. The contrast of the creamy vanilla and sharp strawberry oh. was simply sublime. Right, so lunch all out of the way. Now I think Millie and I are gonna go and write some postcards because on the Orient Express, they have a postal service. More about that in just a second. Oh. You thought I hated, you thought I hated fruit for dessert? I mean, that one I'll make an exception for. You know what I mean? Austin left gum on your jacket. I don't care. Like, I, I don't. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Like, how how many of you have, like, multiple streams on at the same fucking time? It's insane to me that there are literally, I think, at least 3,000 motherfuckers in here being like, Austin got gum on your jacket in unison, collectively. What is happening? Oh God, people are so well, wow, and he was Wait, giving, you got gum he on was the giving coat? you shit no, about I, taking your jacket gum. off, well, and he got her, gum. Austin got gum, gum on the coat. I was chewing gum. Yeah, you guys are annoying. Okay, yeah, I'm not shocked that Austin is doing that. Okay, here you go. That's what is Tarakan on the stream? He's doing his own stream right now. Oh. Uh, some WD forty gets that off. I mean, I don't fucking know. Oh, Ice, I think. I helps. was chewing gum. Kirk's supposed to. Kirk doesn't go oh, for me anymore. But Kirk, you like, shouldn't cover I for him. I just calls him like I see yes. him. Yes. That's it. It's you like, should. Don't cover You shouldn't him. get gum on your jacket. Yeah, well, but don't you fucking do. throw me under the bus. And throw Austin? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. You got gum on it. I don't know what to tell you uh, about that. That's the least shocking thing I've ever seen. Um, meanwhile, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and that is not shocking to you. Less shocking than perhaps gum on the jacket from Austin show. Um, specifically because you already know it comes at the top of every hour. I didn't buy the jacket for myself. I can't fit in that jacket. I bought it for Connor. Austin stole it from Connor, has been wearing it nonstop, and has now stuck gum onto it. Why? Because he's a messy bitch, okay? You already know it. I already know it. Here's the three-minute ad break now. You already know that. Anyway, let's keep going. So, Millie and I have arrived back at the scene of the crime last night, the bar car. Got a pen? Got a pen? Look at that, I love that. And then some nice postcards. They just keep giving these people pens, which I find very odd. I guess that's like a thing for rich people now, just pens. I think this is such a lovely and thoughtful touch Belmont have thought of here. It's becoming a forgotten tradition, I feel. So I'm glad we're able to take advantage of this on-rail postal service. Next, we're heading to the only restaurant we've not explored yet, La Oriental. It's clearly inspired by the East, but sadly not open to dining during our trip. However, they have set up a bunch of board games and I'd promised Millie I'd teach her how to play chess. Well, that doesn't look like chess, Millie. I was gonna teach. I was gonna teach Millie some chess, but that looks like checkers. What everyone's playing is chess, but what we're playing now with Millie is checkers. So I'm very happy to announce that I won three of three. Um, Millie's very upset. You know, poor Luke. No, I'm joking. It was Millie's first time playing, so we'll give her a break. Anyway, we've just arrived in Verona. Let's quickly head down to the platform, check it out, and head back to our compartment because it's time for afternoon tea. Millie and I both couldn't remember. I think the fu the funniest part about this has been the the regularly getting out of the train. 
I don't know why. I just find it really. I just find it funny that like they just keep getting out of the train over and over again for, this for like ten name, minutes. But he's by far our favorite in the restaurant car. Amazing personalized service. Well, Ellie, have you been to Verona before? I have not. Well, new place. We have been advised strictly not to go any further away from the train because it will leave without us. Oh my god! The oh my god <laughs> so nice about the Orient Express is every little detail is taken care of. The room has been made up again. It's just beautiful. It really does never get old. And I, I know, of course, given the price point, you do expect a certain level of attention to detail, but it is impeccable. With that, yeah, you've guessed it. It's time for afternoon tea, oh. complete with brioche bun, creme oh. fraiche, and my oh. requested Japanese green tea. There's also jellied fruits and cookies. Well, this is very civilized. Brother, you are, that is not a cookie, dog. Dude, British people are so strange. He just looked at, he just looked at a bunch of fucking like, like biscuits and cupcakes and was like, what well, cookie? Nice. It's a fucking cookie, lad. I really don't want to. It's a biscuit, you muppet. Say something's hot, don't touch it. I want to touch it, but apparently, yeah, that's super hot. <laughs> so I've got a little napkin. Oh, this is chaos. How am I going to do it? It's a scone and a biscuit. It's going to happen. Post afternoon tea, I think it's time to check out some of the other compartments, namely the one I originally booked, the twin room. These are laid out as a sofa during the day, but then bunk beds during the night. There's no ensuite toilet, instead, just an in room sink. These are the far more authentic versions of the sleeper compartments on the original Orient Express, and they're what travelling in the 20s and 30s would have been like. The suites are only a modern addition for those wanting ensuite bathrooms and showers. If you're wondering where you'd go to the bathroom when staying in a twin room, these are located in each train car and shared between other sleeper passengers. These are kept very clean and well stocked with Lalique amenities throughout the trip. But will you ask, how did you and Millie get that swanky upgrade? Well, here's the thing. I paid for this trip just like any other passenger. No YouTuber shortcuts, discounts, or indeed point redemptions. Instead, I booked through my friend who runs a luxury travel agency, theluxurytraveler.com. You get what's called Bellini benefits when booking through him, which can result in space available upgrades in luxury hotels, and in this case, trains. The link to his website is down below. That's an ad. So technically it is a YouTuber shortcut, but valid regardless. God damn. Bellini benefits, dude. I want to fucking benefit. Holy shit, that looks fire. 